E.K. was a young man of Nanesiath, the only child of his parents, and they were extremely fond of him, as he was of fine proportions and very good to look upon. They were poor people, and when Eke grew up and became a man, he had very little money indeed. In fact, he had so little food that every day it was his custom to go to the market carrying an empty bag into which he used to put anything eatable he could find after the market was over. At this time, Ophio was king. He was an old man, but he had plenty of wives. One of these women named Anse was K.E. White Young and very good-looking. She did not like her old husband, but wished for a young and handsome husband. She therefore told her servant to go round the town and the market to try and find such a man and to bring him at night by the side door to her house, and she herself would let him in, and would take care that her husband did not discover him. That day the servant went all round the town, but failed to find any young man good-looking enough. She was just returning to report her ill-success when, on passing through the marketplace, she saw Ika picking up the remains of corn and other things which had been left on the ground. She was immediately struck with his fine appearance and strength, and saw that he was just the man to make a proper lover for her mistress. So she went up to him, and said that the queen had sent for him, as she was so taken with his good looks. At first, Ike was frightened and refused to go, as he knew that if the king discovered him, he would be killed. However, after much persuasion he consented, and agreed to go to the queen's side door when it was dark. When night came, he went with great fear and trembling, and knocked very softly at the queen's door. The door was opened at once by the queen herself, who was dressed in all her best clothes and had many necklaces, beads, and anklets on. Directly, she saw Eke, she fell in love with him at once, and praised his good looks and his shapely limbs. She then told her servant to bring water and clothes, and after he had had a good wash and put on a clean cloth, he rejoined the queen cloth. She hid him in her house all the night. In the morning, when he wished to go, she would not let him. But, although it was very dangerous, she hid him in the house and secretly conveyed food and clothes to him. Ike stayed there for two weeks, and then he said that it was time for him to go and see his mother, but the queen persuaded him to stay another week, much against his will. When the time came for him to depart, the queen got together fifty carriers with presents for Ituan's mother who, she knew, was a poor woman. Ten slaves carried three hundred rods. The other forty carried yams, pepper, salt, tobacco, and cloth. When all the presents arrived, A.K.'s mother was very pleased and embraced her son, and noticed with pleasure that he was looking well, and was dressed in much finer clothes than usual. But when she heard that he had attracted the queen's attention, she was frightened as she knew the penalty imposed on anyone who attracted the attention of one of the king's wives. Eke stayed for a month in his parents' house and worked on the farm, but the queen could not be without her lover any longer, so she sent for him to go to her at once. Ichwen went again and, as before, arrived at night when the queen was delighted to see him again. In the middle of the night, some of the king's servants, who had been told the story by the slaves who had carried the presents to Ichwen's mother, came into the queen's room and surprised her there with Ewan. They hastened to the king and told him what they had seen. Ichuan was then made a prisoner, and the king sent out to all his people to attend at the palaver house to hear the case try. He also ordered eight eggbows to attend armed with machetes. When the case was tried, Ichuan was found guilty, and the king told the eight eggbow men to take him into the bush and deal with him according to native custom. The eggbows then took Ichuan into the bush and tied him up to a tree. Then with a sharp knife, they cut off his lower jaw and carried it to the king. When the queen heard the fate of her lover, she was very sad and cried for three days. This made the king angry, so he told the Egbos to deal with his wife and her servant according to their law. They took the queen and the servant into the bush, where Atuan was still tied up to the tree dying and in great pain. Then, as the queen had nothing to say in her defense, they tied her and the girl up to different trees and cut the queen's lower jaw off in the same way as they had her lover. The Egbos then put out both the eyes of the servant and left all three to die of starvation. The king then made an Egbo law that for the future no one belonging to Ike's family was to go into the market on market day and that no one was to pick up the rubbish in the market. The king made an exception to the law in favor of the vulture and the dog, who were not considered very fine people 
and would not be likely to run off with one of the king's wives, and that is why you still find vultures and dogs doing scavenger in the market, places even at the present time.